Welcome to Salisbury University on the Air, a program highlighting the activities and the people of the campus. My name is Susan Purnell. Capistrano has its swallows and Salisbury University has its seagulls. Each fall, like the Capistrano in the spring, our birds return to SU. Whether they're among the thousands of cyclists who come to test their mettle during the seagull century, or the hundreds of university alumni and families of current students who enjoy homecoming and family weekend festivities on campus. This year, these big events are held during back-to-back -back weekends in early October. With me to discuss them are Amy Waters, SU Director of Donor Relations and Special Events, Jamie Block, Director of Alumni Relations and Gift Development for SU, and Stephanie Kasman, Assistant Dean of Student Transitions. First is Amy. So welcome back, Amy. Glad to be here. Always good to see you. I got to see you two days in a row. This is very exciting. Yes. I know. We had a big event last we night. We did. It was a great time. We've got another one coming up. We do. The we Seagull do. The Seagull Century. Now, for the two people out there in TV land who don't know what that is, can you explain what the Seagull sure. Century is? I mean, this has been going on for years. Yeah. This is our 30th year. That's amazing. For the bike tour. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, a big effort. It's a tri-county tour. There's two routes. Um, it's a bike tour that starts on campus as well as ends on campus for a celebration of a lawn party. So this mm -hmm. is a 30th year mm -hmm. uh, celebration, and how many cyclists actually ride in it? We're hoping for 6,000. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a nice number for us to manage mm -hmm. both uh, security. <laughs> that sounds totally unmanageable to me. Yeah, and the that's routes and everything. So it is a lot to manage when you yeah. have that many yeah. on bikes. And safety, you know, that's our number one concern too. Mm -hmm. and, and about how far away do they come from? Yeah, well, we're really excited. We have pretty much almost all the states represented. Uh, we just had Michigan and Arizona as I'm flipping Flipping through the registrants today, mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. uh, four, four more from each of those states. Um, but majority, you can imagine, from the tri-state area, right. they kind of make it doable drive for the one night stay. What kind of press does this event get? It does. It gets a lot, and we're very excited to be here today to talk about it and promote what's kind of new and coming for the Seagull Century. That's mm -hmm. great. Um, now, you said there are route mm -hmm. options, so you don't have to do the whole century ride, right? Right, right. So the 100 mile is mm -hmm. the most popular. That's our traditional, because mm -hmm. you go out to Assateague State see the Park, ponies. you see the ponies, the yeah. ocean, the sand is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a good about 1,500 that do, that'll do the Princess Anne. That's about 64 miles. It's still a good, good distance. <laughs> it's a lot farther than mm -hmm. I'm going to ride, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, Tell us about the rest stops because I think they're kind of fun. Yeah, we want to make them fun. And mm -hmm. I think that's why people keep coming back, you know, year after year. Uh, we have music. We have local bands. We have um, civic groups working there. We have student groups managing. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of uh, nutrition. Uh, there's Gatorade. We have bike tech, just in case if you get a flat tire or sure. broken spoke. We're there to help you and to get mm -hmm. back on the route. Uh, so we just really come together trying to make it a fun, festive location uh, for the rest stops. And they're about every 15 miles, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what if it rains? <laughs> it's still a go. <laughs> it's still uh, right a now, go. The forecast looks wonderful. That's so great. fingers crossed yeah. that uh, we do have that 75 degree No weather. hurricanes coming oh, up. No. That hurt us a couple years ago. Yeah, but only imagine. once, really, in 30 It did. Years. In 30 yeah. years, we had to cancel one time. So. That's, that's amazing, really. It is. Yeah. It truly is. So rain or shine. <laughs> We're doing this thing. It's a go. Now, this year's event, I think, starts with, with something you call the Taste of the Shore. What's that? Yeah, yeah. It's a free event. So oh. we really want to welcome people to Salisbury mm -hmm. University, bring them into campus. Mag's Gym is filled with vendors, not mm -hmm. just all cycling vendors. There's really some cool buys in there. Mm -hmm. We have registration going on for a little bit for Friday for those late registrants. And then outside, we're going to have a juggler. We have sand sculpture. There's a live music. We're going to have a little bit of finger food. Uh, Dollies and Fishers are going to come in and sample some of their yummy products oh, too. So great. we really wanted to showcase Salisbury University, Eastern Shore. Mm -hmm. And again, it's free. It is. <laughs> that that's and do you have mm -hmm. to be riding in the Seagull Century to be there? Yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much. They'll have their bib number. There'll mm -hmm. be a lot of traffic on campus. Really starting three o'clock on Friday. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, in addition to the post. Party that you always have here. I right. think the city's also doing something they this year. Are. Aren't they are. Jamie Heater's been on the lead for that, and mm -hmm. there's going to be music, and that's mm -hmm. Saturday evening. More of more nighttime. Downtown. Downtown. Okay, so great. So that's a great offer with mm -hmm. the city that what they're doing. I love it when you all bring people downtown. <laughs> that's terrific. Um, 
also, there's some new things going on this year that yeah. we haven't done well, before. Well, we wanted to just because it's the, the 30th, 30th year. Yeah. So we do have this lovely little souvenir that everybody will get. It's a magnet. Oh, it's so a... we wanted to give you one oh, as thank well. thank you. And it highlights the 30 years and really nice colors. Uh, it is nice colors. Highlighting the Eastern Shore and the different towns. You That's know, great. We're in Princess Anne. We're in Berlin. We go to Assateague. And uh, Powellville is another one. So just showcase the effort and the collaboration that everybody comes together to make it that, an event. That's mm -hmm. terrific. I know that mm -hmm. the event is the largest, uh, mm -hmm. I guess, revenue producing producing event for mm -hmm. the county mm -hmm. in the year. Is that right? Right. So Beacon, we always lean on them here mm -hmm. at the Purdue School of Business. They always do a survey uh, and tally up all those great numbers. They have direct and indirect costs that they run for mm -hmm. us, uh, but they're at 2.6 right now. 2.6. That's how much money mm -hmm. that weekend comes into this county. Mm -hmm. Everybody's eating, from the event. buying sure. gas, shopping, yeah, jewelry at, ho <laughs> at hotels. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that, that's, mm -hmm. that's amazing, really. So you raise a lot of money, too, mm -hmm. during the event. Um, where does that money go? Right. Well, the event's a little expensive, so once all the bills are paid, sure. then we look to our scholarship at Salisbury mm -hmm. University. Then we look to our faculty staff grants, mm -hmm. and then after that, we'll go over to our civic, our local group, like our EMS that support us, Snow Hill, they're constantly on the run, mm -hmm. uh, and our... Um, fire departments and women supporting women. I mean, we'll just look for an all call. Wow. Salisbury Zoo, we've donated to them before. There's no so, lack of need right. in, in, in any community, Everybody really. Has a so great it's story. wonderful that you do have mm -hmm. uh, a way to give back to the community as well as sure. the SU community, yeah. the community as a whole. Um, if I'm interested mm -hmm. in riding, which mm -hmm. I don't think I am since I have a broken <laughs> But others foot. might be, right? But others might be. Mm -hmm. How do you go about sure. registering? Sure. We have our online registration. Uh, it is $90 right now. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be open until probably another five more days. And then come Friday, October 5th, we're open for like a four-hour window where you can walk in mm -hmm. and we'll register for you. Uh, that transaction to kind of get those folks registered. You don't turn anybody away, do you? No, we no. do not. Okay. We do not. So we're quite excited. And also for this year, I forgot to mention, is in Mag's gym, we're doing Why I Ride. So we and my staff, uh, we hear about it all the time. On We have cyclists from all around, and mm -hmm. some of their stories are pretty touching on why they're wanting to ride 100 mm -hmm. miles. So what we're doing is this big banner in Mag's gym, ton of post-it notes, and it'll be a design behind mm -hmm. it. But we're hoping everybody comes in, take that post-it note, and just really tell us your quick little story. Right. Maybe it's for health. Maybe it's in, in memory of someone. But just jot it down and put it back on the board. Mm -hmm. And then we have a nice photo background, too. Oh, that is mm -hmm. a nice photo background. Yeah. Plus, I guess you can take that information for future press mm -hmm. releases. Yep. And, Great um, stories. Other, Great other stories. things that you're going to do for the 31st. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Making you feel old, aren't uh -huh. I? <laughs> you've been here for how many oh of them? Oh my maybe? gosh, 13 of them. 13, so almost <laughs> half of the, the rides you've organized, yeah. and you've just done such a marvelous job. Aww. I've attended a lot of the after parties with my friend Steve, sure. who actually does ride right. in this, um, and it's it's very exciting it to is. attend, and, and it's, it's just one of the best things, I mm -hmm. think, that happens for our, again, for our SU campus and for our community. And the local community. And the local community. Sure. So our, thank you for all you thank do. Thank you. No, Absolutely. No, I, I got to put to a big it. thing out to everybody. I mean, the law officers, uh, the state troopers, I mean, it's just amazing how many people come together. The DNR police, I mean, it's a ton of work. State Highway really helps us out. It takes as well. more than a village. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of little villages, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Well, good luck with it this thank year. You. And thanks again for being with Perfect. me. Perfect. Glad to be mm -hmm. here. And now here's a look at what's happening on the campus in October.
My next guest is Jamie Block, Alumni Relations and Gift Development Director, to tell us what's in store for this year's Alumni Homecoming. So welcome back, Jamie. Great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Great as always. And I love talking about Alumni Homecoming Weekend. When is it this year? Uh, well, Homecoming Week is uh, October 8th through the 13th, so we're mm -hmm. really excited. We have a lot of events, a lot of reunions, so I'm excited to talk about it. I bet. Now, you're calling it Alumni Homecoming this year instead of just Homecoming. What was the reason for that? You know, we've had a lot of alumni who weren't sure if they could come back oh. if it wasn't their reunion and they weren't specifically uh -huh. messaged. So we just want to make sure everybody understands this is for all of our alumni, and really even our friends of SU um, who are out in the community as well. So it's we just want to make sure everyone's welcome. Now, I know one of the big events is the football game. Yep. Who are we playing this year? Playing Montclair State uh -huh. uh, at 1 o'clock at Seagull Stadium. So we're really excited. Um, you know, the 3-0 and right now. So you know, I'm sure they're going to keep, keep rolling. I, I love it. Um, and is there going to be a little tailgating before the big game? Yes. Yeah, so um, last year we had tailgating. It was a huge success. Um, we're doing it again this year. It's $10 a car. Uh, cash only, so it's going to be in the Wayne Street and Avery Street lots. Okay. Um, so I'm sh we had a great turnout last year. We're looking for another great turnout. Um, the only thing is we're not doing tailgating in the parking garage just for our safety reasons. Sure. So, um, but now that $10, what does that include? That just, it gets you, gets in, you the, in, in the lot. a good parking it just helps, place. Honestly, it just helps pay for um, all the different trash and port johns sure. and all those different things. Sure. that. Cost and it gets money, you a pretty good so. parking place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, are there any other athletic events going on that weekend? Yes. So we have men's and women's soccer at the soccer complex at mm -hmm. 2 o'clock. Both are playing Mary Washington, so it's a great uh, conference battle. Um, volleyball is also playing at 2 o'clock, Mary Washington, believe it or not, mm -hmm. um, at MAGS. And then also at 6 o'clock that evening, uh, field hockey is playing Mary Washington as well. So it doesn't, <laughs> I asked uh, Jerry DiBartolo if that was. On purpose, and he said no. It's not, just kind of it just the way happened. it worked out. It just so, happened. Uh, but it's all you know. Mary Washington's a great opponent, so uh, yeah. I think we're going to have some. They'll be success. good games. Yeah, great. Now, for those who would rather participate than watch the games, I understand you have some activities for them: a golf tournament and a powder puff football. Yep. Is that right? Yep. So, uh, golf tournaments for our Maroon and Gold Club, which mm -hmm. are athletics. Uh, Booster organization that's at 10 o'clock at Nutter's Crossing. Mm -hmm. um, registration starts at 9. And then we also have the Powder Puff football game, which is on the uh, the lawn of Holloway Hall. And now, that's residents who plays? Life. Residents Life does that. Um, I think okay, so it's students against students. Students, I think they might have some alumni in that type oh, do of thing, they? too. But uh -huh. it's, a great, it's a great tradition. Oh, that's great. Now, also, every year, we have the new inductees into the Hall's, Hall of Fame. Yes. So tell us a little about who is going to be inducted this year. Yes, yeah, so we have a number of unbelievable uh, former student athletes that are coming in. Um, so we have Sue Ackerman for women's lacrosse, uh, Chase Caruso and Justin Smith, both from men's lacrosse, uh, Brad DeHaven from football, and his wife, Aaron DeHaven, really? Aaron Bud DeHaven um, as well. So I don't know if we've ever had a a husband couple. and wife being inducted in the same year, wow. um, but it's pretty special. That Both is. were unbelievable when they were here. Um, did they did they meet here and then? I believe so. I, yeah, and that's great. Yep. And, um, then and where more. is that? Oh, we yeah, one, one more. more to, uh, mm -hmm. Dan later from Men's Soccer. As okay. Well, so. Okay. And where is this ceremony? When does it take place? Six o'clock on Friday evening Friday at night. the uh, academic uh, Greer Academic Commons. So okay. it's an unbelievable event, and um, you know people can purchase tickets. So really, if they, it'd be great to get some, some local folks out there to support um, you know, our Hall of Famers. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. Um, question. So homecoming, in my mind, connotes reunions. There must mm -hmm. be some special reunions this year? Yeah, we, ha we do. We have a number of class year reunions, class of 78, 83. Um, basically, we celebrate them every five years. So mm -hmm. a lot of the classes that end in three or eight. Mm -hmm. um, we also have our w, uh, SX, uh, WXSU reunion that happens every five years as well. Um, and we have a whole list. I don't know what that um, is. A radio, a campus radio station. Oh, 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 the radio station. Mm -hmm. We have alumni come back. Who have um, worked there. Yep. Oh, okay. And then they, they get to see what, what the students are doing now. So it's really, it's a great time. See, I only look really. at Pac-14. <laughs> <Right. laughs> It's just radio. <laughs> right, so, right. How about faculty and staff? Do they have any special reunions yep, as well? Yep. We have our uh, Maritime faculty and um, retired staff reunion on Thursday um, at noon. 
and that's a, an invite only event as well. And we're really looking forward to getting all of them back. We have a great turnout every year. It's great to hear the stories and just mm -hmm. the camaraderie that, that occurs at that event too. That, that's good that you include the staff yeah. and the faculty in, in Homecoming Weekend, Alumni Homecoming yeah. Weekend, I'll yeah. say it right. Um, I also understand there's going to be a special event that is in memory of someone who contributed a great deal to this uh, community. Yeah, uh, Rob Schulteis passed away, um, you know, a, a couple years ago, mm -hmm. and we've worked with the family to um, help incorporate SU into the um, Run the Borders Like Rob event, which is Sunday mm -hmm. uh, of Homecoming Weekend. It's at... Uh, right on the boardwalk where the dough ro roller is. Oh, yeah. And so um, there's all the particulars on our website, but basically... So it's, it's a run. It's a run. Okay. Yeah, or you can walk. Um, so because he was a runner. Mm-hmm. Right. And he was a member. He was a president of our alumni association I for years. I remember interviewing him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. Used to do this for us. Mm. Um, so, you know, we still miss him. It's an opportunity to really um, carry on his legacy, and all the proceeds will go to his scholarship here at SU. So okay. it's really... Um, we're excited to be a part That's of it. That's great that he has an endowed scholarship. Mm -hmm. He he was a, a wonderful person. And, yep, and, and, and great family. Loved by everybody. Yep. Yes. Yep, and we've had a number of uh, folks from Cisco and Dough Roller and just a lot of people who really continue to, um, you know, work hard to make sure his legacy stays, mm -hmm. stays in front. Keep his of memory course. alive. Yep, right. exactly. It's a great That's way of putting great. it. Um, why do you, personally, think that it's important for alumni to come back to their and keep in touch with their yeah, alma mater yeah i mean that's a great question i think su continues to change whether it's physically the new students that we have and especially whenever we have alumni come back and oh, i haven't been back for five years or 10 years or 20 years they're shocked they're they're amazed and shocked and there's nothing like seeing and get reuniting with with your fellow classmates or teammates um Facebook, everything's great, but there's nothing like talking to people in the flesh and rehashing those old times. No, there um, isn't. And, and, and you take all, you, you kind of just start where you where you left off mm -hmm. usually with people that have been friends for that long of a time. And what it also does a lot of times is it creates some maybe some networking opportunities, not just with them, but sometimes with students. Mm -hmm. um, so we have some great students, and we have a lot of opportunities for internships and things. So sometimes you never know what those getting back on campus really does. Absolutely. Uh, is there a website or a Facebook page, Twitter account? Where do we go to find out more if we want to know more about homecoming? Well, we have all those um, with uh, Salisbury alumni. Um, mm -hmm. But also, uh, www.salisbury.edu backslash alumni is mm -hmm. where you can click and find all of our events. Um, and there's there's a lot for Family Weekend as well, um, which I know you're going to talk about. Right. I'm sure it'll be a terrific time. It'll be great to have all these people around. It's It's been great to have the students back. Yeah. And I uh, can't wait to have the alumni as well. So thanks for sharing all the good stuff that's going on that great. weekend. Well, appreciate it. Always good to see you. You too. My final guest is Stephanie Kasvin, Assistant Dean of Student Transitions, to talk about Family Weekend. So welcome, Stephanie, and good to meet you. Thank you, Susan. It's so nice to be here. Nice to meet you as well. Absolutely. So before we get talking a little bit about the Family Weekend that's planned, um, you're kind of new to the school. Tell me what an Assistant Dean of Student Transitions actually does. You know, Susan, that's a great question, Thanks. one that I am still in the process of figuring <laughs> out. Um, primarily, my role, though, is to ensure that students and their families are able to transition to Southbury University in a smooth and um, effective manner. And mm -hmm. so that's really um, managing that process as far as communication from the university, their orientation programs, their move-in, and then um, welcome week activities, um, and then just maintaining contact with the families throughout the year. Now, I know you just started in July. I did. Um, what was your background? Sure. So I um, actually have been for the last four years at the University of West Georgia, uh -huh. um, where I was functioning as the assistant director of orientation. So mm -hmm. um, I do have a background in oh, transitions, do. and so I'm excited to bring that experience here to SU. That's great. Thank now, you. Now, again, we have Family Weekend and mm -hmm. Alumni Homecoming Weekend on the same weekend. Yes, Is that right? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, how can parents check in and register for all the events going on right now? Absolutely. So um, there is no charge. There is no registration fee for Family Weekend. Mm -hmm. In fact, the majority of the events that are happening over the course of the weekend are free. Um, for our families, we will be having a check-in on Friday afternoon, um, October 12th, mm -hmm. from 1 to 4 p.m. Um, in the Gorary Student Union outside okay. the Wacomico Room, which is right off the Dogwood parking lot. Right. 
Okay, so they sh they check in there, yes, and then I understand there's some special sessions, particularly for them, I guess, to help them in the transition, help them and their students Absolutely. in the transition. What, what kinds of topics are included? Sure, so we find that there are some general areas at this time of year that our families really have questions about mm -hmm. because it's the things that their students really have questions mm -hmm. about. Um, so the three offerings that we're going to have, um, the first one starts at 2 p.m., and then we're gonna repeat the same session at 3 p.m. Um, the three topics are academic advising and course registration. So our students right now are getting ready to register for their spring classes. Mm -hmm. um, how to support your Seagull um, with academic resources. Um, so our Center for Student Achievement will talk about the academic support resources that are available on campus. And then the final session is done by our one of our uh, wonderful counselors at the Counseling Center on just how to support your students' transition and so where they are psychologically and emotionally in this process as well. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a hard thing to do. I remember that yeah. vacuum <laughs> when my parents drove off <laughs> at college. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's a terrific transition. Most people have never been away from home that long. Right. I mean, so. it's, it is so new and novel for the majority of our students that we really want to make sure that we're providing their families with the information so they can start transitioning themselves from being sort of mm -hmm. the doer to a resource to help their students do themselves. Right, right. Because we parents sometimes do hover and think that we have to do it all, but now the guys are on their own and, yeah. you know, they have to just have to let them fly. Right. This is the beginning like the of their... the seagulls they are. Right. <laughs> this is the beginning of their adulthood. Right. And so we want to provide resources to make sure that that transition is as smooth and as seamless as possible. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's great. I don't know if this position has always been there. I've never talked to anyone in your position. Mm -hmm. So it's a new position. It is a brand new position. Okay. I'm the first one. So I, I started in so. late July and um, yeah, so really figuring it out and introducing myself to mm -hmm. the SU community and, and helping them figure it out. Well, that I think that's wonderful. Thank you. That we're thinking about the psychology of starting school. Um, now, I know that the families have a special get-together after the football game, right? Absolutely. So we're calling it a sweet treat after the game this year because we might change our minds a little bit based uh -huh. on the weather. Um, but it's uh, predominantly going to be ice cream social. Um, we have a couple of activities for the younger families as well, including um, they can create their own slime which is always a fun thing for, sure. for young children to be able to do. And then um, we're going to be right out on the uh, Sammy's Angle by Henson. And so we're going to have um, a Polaroid and some pictures that we can take of the family with Sammy as well that they can take home with them. Uh, and that's free. And that is totally free. Just show up and eat ice cream. Yeah. And, and make the, slime. Make slime, eat ice cream, take a picture. Um, and at the same time, there's a couple of other events happening in that general area. Um, the Untouchables Musical Showcase, um, which is one of our student groups, will be performing mm -hmm. in that general area. And then there's also going to be the car show will be happening in that area as well. So Now, when the parents leave on Sunday, I think there's a sort of goodbye event. And it's always been one of my favorite events. That's the Jazz Brunch. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about that where it is. Sure. So um, the jazz brunch will be taking place in the commons. Um, there will be uh, SU's own jazz band. So there are people who work here at the university mm, will be performing. They're so good. They are so good in the, um, in the commons, in the bistro. Um, and the dining services staff has a delightful and full brunch spread um, ready for our families to, to join their student in and their sort of last meal before they head home. And there's a little charge for that, right? There is a charge. Okay. Um, the, the charge for the meal will be at the door of the common so there will right. be a cash register right there that families can pay Terrific. for. And that's pretty much the only thing they have to pay for. That is the only thing. Um, if they go to the football game this weekend mm -hmm. the student charge is free but there is a seven dollar general admission well, ticket cost. Well that makes cost. sense. Sure. Yeah but it's other than that game. all of the other events are free. That's great. Well I'm so glad to meet you and I think this is a terrific new uh, addition to what we do for the students when they first come to college. So congratulations on your new job and I am sure you're just going to do great in it. Thank you so much, Susan. Absolutely. Appreciate Thanks it. for being here. I'd like to thank my guests, Jamie Block, Alumni Relations and Gift Development Director, Stephanie Kasvin, Assistant Dean of Student Transitions, and Amy Waters, Seagull Century Coordinator and SU Director of Donor Relations and Special Events. So many enjoyable things are happening on the campus this fall. I hope to see you at some of them. I'm Susan Purnell, and this has been Salisbury University on the Air. Thank you for watching.